Muchachos y muchachas, when it comes to the topic of conservatorship, I think this really is a trigger word for us uh, in relation to Britney Spears, because in recent time, we've seen all of her details spill out concerning her conservatorship, concerning her mysterious disappearance from the public eye for years. And upon acquisition of her fan base, which was the original onset of this in investigation, it's it's kind of weird because it was like kind of a, a public uh, people's investigation, right? And so when people started publishing details on her conservatorship and kind of uh, listing out their speculations, there uh, grew more sensationalism over her, you know, disappearance in the public eye. So as you guys know, Britney Spears, her conservatorship actually ended recently. But this also turned a lot of attention and uh, a lot of what we have learned about this particular situation over to Amanda Bynes. Now, it wasn't as aggressive or intense as the Britney Spears controversy was, but I think there, there was still a looming question about what was going on with Amanda Bynes and her conservatorship. Well, my friends, just days ago, it was announced that Amanda Bynes ended her conservatorship. And I thought, well, what are the details? What do we know ever since her conservatorship? What do we know uh, ever since her disappearing from the public eye? I wanted to go through that. And also some curious details are coming out of this. And it makes me wonder, the reason why I'm going through this is it made me wonder if what we know now about the media, the tabloids, the um, you know sensationalism of uh, their narrative versus what really went on, if that had anything to do with her being put portrayed as this really, really crazy person. Um, there were some be behave behaviors that were pretty bizarre within Amanda Biden's situation. But I also wanted to just comb through that and see, uh, you know, what exactly we can find. I, I already saw that there was a, a, an allegation of a mind microchip being installed. I'm not kidding. That's what she said, not what I said. So stay right there. We're going to go through it. Friends, big dangers are all around us these days. To survive what's coming, you need to be prepared and self-reliant. That's why I recommend getting yourself some cryptocurrency and some land, some gold, but especially a proper stockpile of emergency food. It's easier than you think. Go to preparewithnatalie.com right now and you'll save $50 and get free shipping on a generous four-week supply of emergency food from My Patriot Supply. They're the largest preparedness company in America. They've served millions of people who are prepared for what's coming. This food stays fresh for up to 25 years. It will be there when you need it. So do yourself a favor and go to preparewithnatalie.com. You'll save $50 and get free shipping on a four-week emergency food kit, which gives you breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks totaling over 2,000 calories a day. When things get ugly, you'll be glad you will have this food kit. Don't get caught unprepared. Go to preparewithnatalie.com right now. Preparewithnatalie.com. All right. When it comes to Amanda Bynes, what do we know about her? Well, for starters, she was a child star. She uh, did act in, uh, I, I believe, at the age of 12 years old. But we most know her through a show called All That. That's where she uh, got her grand start, a Nickelodeon show aimed towards the youth, uh, towards children. It was kind of like a SNL slash, I don't know if you guys remember Mad TV. I guess that shows my age and my millennialism. Uh, but Mad TV, SNL, but for kids, it was like a comedy sketch show. And uh, from then, I, it was so successful that uh, she got her own spinoff show called The Amanda Show. So ever since then, her career had flourished. She was starring in movies, romantic comedies, uh, even up to, uh, you know, right, right before 2010, she was acting in big movies like Hairspray, Easy A. And then all of a sudden in 2010, it came to a screeching halt when she decided, 
I don't want to act anymore. So with this, she gave reason on a, I believe right now her Twitter is resurrected. I'm not quite sure what's going on with her Twitter. Uh, but when she had this Twitter, it did deactivate at one point. But she did give a quote about her uh, quitting acting where it said, being an actress isn't as fun as it may seem. If I don't love something anymore, I stop doing it. I don't love acting anymore, so I've stopped doing it. I know 24 is a young age to retire, but you heard it here first. And then she continued um, later on. Uh, later on, she uh, it's kind of weird because within her conservatorship, she actually did show up in a magazine called Paper. And uh, she gave this continued quote here where she said, I literally couldn't stand my appearance in Easy A, the movie, and I didn't like my performance. I was absolutely convinced I needed to stop acting after seeing it. I w and then she continued, I was high on marijuana when I saw that, but for some reason, it really started to affect me. I don't know if it was a drug-induced psychosis or what, but it affected my brain in different ways. Uh, I'm sorry, it affected my brain in a different way than it affects other people. It absolutely changed my perception of things. So let's just flash back, though. Why was the media running a hype on Amanda Bynes? So she started to get into some legal trouble. And this is the part where I, I really want to pay attention and understand what exactly she did uh, that... Um, kind of gave her this bizarre, chaotic, psychotic image. Because I remember even when this started and the, the internet wasn't what it was today, it was still there, but, you know, it was more there to believe the mainstream narrative uh, until, you know, that all changed. But she started getting into legal trouble. In 2012, Bynes got arrested for the first time for a DUI after she clipped a sheriff's deputy cruiser with her black BMW around 3 a.m. in West Hollywood. Her mugshot showed that her signature sandy blonde locks had been dyed a light blue, pink blue. Um, sorry, light pink hue. In February 2014, she was convicted of reckless driving for that incident per an L.A. Times, and she was sentenced to three years of probation and three months of alcohol education classes. In 2012, she was also charged with two hit and runs for incidents on April 10th and August 4th. Uh, the first one occurred just days after the DUI arrest. While those cases were ongoing on the West Coast, Bynes had another run in with the law in the East Coast. She threw a bong out of her Times Square apartment. Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, a 36 floor window after cops responded to a call. She had been smoking pot in the lobby. During this time, she made several court appearances with a new look that consisted of colorful and disheveled wigs, uh, large sunglasses and piercing. So you can kind of see this photo here, here, where she has that disheveled wig. Oh, gosh, don't talk to me about disheveled wigs. Um, the bong tossing case was eventually dismissed after Bynes agreed to undergo regular psychiatric treatment. She was charged with reckless endangerment and marijuana possession for the crime. By 2014, however, Bynes was booked again for a second DUI charge after police determined she was under the influence of a controlled substance. She was reported high on marijuana at the time. So um, I just want to pause because she did mention that, you know, in, in her original quote, she mentioned the drugs that she uh, later on, it's going to mention more drugs uh, more than, you know, I know people don't think of marijuana as a drug, but, you know, she she does say that it, it, it affected her differently. And you have seen stories out there of marijuana, you know, affecting different people differently. You know, she she said that she was affected differently. So was her drug use, you know, implicative in all of this? Was she acting bizarre while she was under the influence. So continued on. Bynes goes on a Twitter, a bizarre Twitter rants 
Um, while Bynes was dealing with legal drama in the courtroom, she was seemingly blowing off steam in Twitter all through 2013. The former Hollywood darling turned bad girl called out everyone from Barack Obama to Drake on the social media platform. In tweets from a now deleted account, Bynes called the then president of the United States and his wife, Michelle Obama, ugly and previously asked POTUS to, uh, to fire the cop who arrested her back in 2012. Uh, she also broke the internet when she tweeted something about Drake to murder her. You know what? Uh, um, but there are some other tweets that were really controversial from Amanda Bynes. Um, so she, it mentioned that she called Barack, uh, Barack Obama ugly. Uh, she had a tweet that said, I was born with webbing in between my eyes. That was a birth defect that I surgically removed. Uh, and then she continues, my doctors are heroes who also correct kids who have cleft lip, something as traumatic as webbing in between your eyes. Um, OK, I'm not sure if that's in particular like super duper bizarre. Maybe she really did have webbing. I, I don't know, but I don't even know what that means. I've never seen that condition myself, uh, but that's uh, one of one of the dubbed bizarre tweets that as U.S. Weekly says. Uh, continued on, uh, she uh, tweeted, I have an eating disorder, so I have a hard time staying thin. And then we talked about the Drake tweet. And then she said, uh, pulling a Britney, she's the man actress said, uh, she said, I buzzed half my head like Cassie. No more old photos, she wrote. Uh, this is the new me. I love it. So they list out uh, tweets that she tweeted out. I, I don't see anything. I mean, I, I, I don't see anything super bizarre. I mean, maybe she was also young, but I don't see anything that dubs it psychotic you, if you know what i mean uh there's another one i'm 27 and i don't like press talking to my parents my parents are almost 70 years old and continued on we are no longer on speaking terms i would rather them be homeless than live off my money whoa okay so we just read off a tweet that could be a clue who knows but that seems like a a what kind of reminiscent to what Britney Spears was claiming, right? So if that is true, that would speak volumes. So after that ordeal with the legal troubles, the uh, bizarre tweets, uh, she did enroll in FITM, uh, the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, uh, and she uh, quietly went to school there. And continued through, uh, she was actually placed under conservatorship in August of 2013. It says, while Bynes was struggling with her mental health, her mother, Lynn, was granted a temporary conservatorship over her then 27 years old. Uh, it says, in 2013, while Bynes was struggling with her mental health, her mother, Lynn, was granted a temporary conservatorship over her then 27 years old, uh, which a judge later made into a permanent conservatorship in October of 2014. According to a legal petition obtained by people at the time, a judge ruled that the actress poses a substantial risk to herself, to others and to the property. Uh, and, th you know, this is this is another this is another indicator because it's about money now. Uh, and this is this is one of the one of the quotes coming out of that ordeal. Amanda has been spending large amounts of her savings, the court document stated. It has been reported that she has recently made extensive purchases as gifts from jewelry stores such as Cartier for strangers. Lynn was uh, tasked with overseeing her daughter's estate, which was valued at $5 million in 2014. Just days after becoming a conservator, she requested to transfer control to a medical health professional and money manager. Uh, but it seems that Lynn, her mother, maintains legal authority despite help from professionals since she still oversees uh, Bynes' personal and medical financial affairs. So I mentioned this 
magazine called Paper. She actually reappeared in 2018, uh, which is a recent appearance. Uh, she seems very polished, uh, very different, you know. And she gave them some heartbreaking insight of what was going on uh, with her. And that's what I mean. You know, the, the media always ha seems to have their version of events, their version of how people should be portrayed when really these people could have been hurting, you know, and, uh, you know, given the reasons that we just read over the conservatorship and uh, some indications of a problem, which was money centric. Uh, I think that this when she's able to talk a lot more might tell a different story. So uh, she continues with a quote. Uh, I'm really ashamed and embarrassed about the things I said. I can't turn back time, but I, if I could, I would concerning the Twitter rants. And she also mentioned that she began uh, with marijuana at the age of 16. And she said she also used cocaine three times and uh, she obtained a prescription for Adderall because uh, she was, you know, she felt the pressure to stay thin on set. And so she, uh, fabricated symptoms of ADD to the doctor to obtain this prescription. So clocking back, though, back in 2014, when she was within her conservatorship and uh, she was on her Twitter rant, she continued to uh, display, you know, just really troublesome tweets. There was one accusation uh, that she made on Twitter about her father uh, saying that uh, she was uh, sexually, verbally and physically abused by her father. Uh, but then she deleted the tweet and rebuttaled with one of the most interesting quotes of all this, where she says, my dad never did any of those things. The microchip in my brain made me say those things, but he's the one that ordered them to microchip me. Uh, what? Like, what do you mean, Amanda Bynes? Uh, you know? Um, so there's that, right? I think that there's a lot that hasn't been said within her uh, time in isolation. But, you know, these are these are the things that I always uh, say that we should question again with the uh, mainstream trying to paint a narrative that isn't necessarily what it's real. As of now, she has made a statement through her lawyer where she is focusing to prioritize her health and well-being uh, after conservatorship, which I would hope she does. But I would also hope that she speaks out on a little bit more because I just feel like there's so much to be said that isn't said right now. Uh, she says uh, to People exclusively, People magazine, following today's decision by the judge to terminate my conservatorship, I would like to thank my fans for their love and well wishes during this time. I would also like to thank my lawyer and my parents for their support over the last nine years. In the last several years, so she thanks her parents, right? So maybe there was some reconciliation there. Maybe it, it kind of seemed like there was an angst uh, in their history at one point, but she did thank her parents. She said, in the last several years, I have been working hard to improve my health so that I can live and work independently, and I will continue to prioritize my well-being in this next chapter. I am excited about my upcoming endeavors, including my fragrance line. I look forward to sharing more when I can, she concludes. Um, so... With that, you know, I just thought that I would uh, bring that to your attention about her conservatorship, but also uh, to stay in curiosity about people in Hollywood that don't necessarily make their own decisions or uh, that uh, have this narrative painted on them. Uh, we talked about, you know, Kanye West. There are some bizarre wording and moments that he has, but there are the moments where he has sound reason and he's actually making logical sense. So, you know, with this, I'm curious as a millennial and uh, growing up watching Amanda Bynes to see what details come out of this. Anyways, guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for your love and support here. Be sure to like, share, subscribe uh, for those of you that are visiting and haven't subscribed yet. I will talk to you guys in my next video.